I think everyone kind of realizes at some point in their life that they're living in a specific kind of body and that that body is maybe a male body or a female body or a body of a different gender and that that affects everyday life for them in important ways. And so our cluster begins with three questions that kind of get people to become conscious of the lived experience of their own gender and their own sexuality and push students in every class that they're taking to think about how the gender and the sex of bodies shapes that subject matter. How do gender and sex vary across space, place, and time? Why is the world sexed and gendered? What are the consequences of living in a world that has gender and sex everywhere? These are questions that get our students to think critically about power relations, which I think is very important, right? Because all cultures have ideologies about what roles people should play, why, who you are, you know, what your social location is, is going to determine a lot about how you treat other people, how you think about yourself, how you fit into a society. So this is one social node that we use to sort of open up these broader questions. So here at Southwestern, I'm in the Department of Religion and I teach classes that focus on Hinduism and Buddhism. One of the things I like uh, students to do, we spend a lot of time, of course, reading texts, but I think the backbone of a lot of religions is narrative. It's the stories that are powerful, stories about why things are the way they are, right, origin stories, etc. So one thing I like students to do is to act out some of these stories. I think when they have to embody a narrative, they really learn it. So I give them a few minutes to prepare and then they enact some of the most important stories, for instance, the life of the historical Buddha Siddhartha Gautama. One of the most common reactions that my students have when they see the history of gender going back before 1900 and particularly before 1800 is just absolute shock. They simply had no idea that the rules of sexuality were so different than what they've been led to believe. When people think about the history of gender, they typically go back only about 50 years maximum. So they think of Leave it to Beaver and the gender roles that we find in black and white television as being their sense of history in the past. But the history of gender is much longer than that. And the rules of what it means to have a gender, what it means to have desire, were profoundly different as we go back in time. And that's a story that most students have never heard. For example, in, in Shakespeare, the women are generally the pursuers, and the boys, of course, played them. And that was felt to be normal at the time. So right there, you've got a flag that the genders are not what we would expect them to be. So representing gender as a cluster, when you look at that in political science, representation has a very specific meaning in political science. In political science, we're looking at representatives in the government and, and how people's voices get translated into policy. And so the way my courses interact with representing gender is we look at how women are represented in government and why there might be differences across countries in the roles that women play in government. So in my Losers of World War II class, uh, I compare Japan and Germany and we discover that there are more women represented in the Bundestag in Germany than in the Diet in Japan, and we start looking for reasons as to why that's the case. Sociology is part of the social sciences, and when students are taking courses in Paideia, they are trying to find ways to link different courses that they would already be taking in the natural sciences, the social sciences, the humanities, and fine arts, but trying to find things that might link those courses together with, with topics that have some similarities. So faculty who are in the representing gender cluster read pieces of literature that we might be teaching in our courses so that we have a sense of what other faculty members are doing in other courses in the cluster. Sociology adds to that cluster by helping students understand some of the structures that shape our lives in gender and how those structures vary in different cultures. It's just kind of understanding the rich and complex ways that 
power structures shape spaces, places, concepts, ideas, and, and give meaning, again, to the experience of what it feels like, what it means to live in a particular kind of body that is recognized in a particular kind of way. It's really pushing students to tie the disciplinary subject matter that they're studying in the classroom to their own conscious experience of living in their own particular body. Thank you.